Hello everyone, in this video we're going to explore how to plan and then write a perfect response for the ASAQA A Paper 2 Section B. We've already gone through what you should be including in your answer and please feel free to go back to those emails to view that. But planning, how do we do it? Well of course we read the question carefully making sure to underline the key parts of the task. You obviously you then need to read the extracts of the question in mind. You need to read them more than once. Then you need to make sure you decide how far you agree with the question statement based on the two chosen texts. And that will form your overall argument. Then obviously just consider our first text. This is an open book examination. You already have chosen the two texts you wish to use. That's really important to... You know, although the question will be something that you uh, will not be familiar with, you should make sure you're familiar with all of the themes, the evidence, the areas you're going to make sure you look. You're not allowed to bring in a text which has been uh, covered in notes, but of course, you need to make sure you know your text inside out. When you do that, you should now think about the argument and make sure you note the form, structure, and language you will use. Really, you should be doing this planning section now without even looking at the texts because you should know the texts themselves inside out. Then for each of the points you have made, three main ideas will suffice in this. You need to consider how far the second text agrees with that view. Is it similar? Is it completely different? It doesn't necessarily matter too much in that sense as long as it supports the overall argument. Again, find your form, structure and language, find your context, but make sure you're also exploring how and why they are similar or different. Proof through that plan to make sure you understand how to achieve full marks. Yeah, so just like section B, you'll get a choice of two questions. And here are examples of two potential questions that you may be asked. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you an example which would make sure it addresses the same elements in the mark scheme, but it's for two different texts. I'm using wall based texts here, but actually, the method that you require, the method itself, the important thing here, is everything that you need for these answers. So this is how I'd write the essay. It's very much typically like your main essay. My introduction obviously needs to cover my argument and I need to briefly begin to explain why that is. My main body is again where I'll achieve the majority of my marks. I should start off with the first text, make sure I'm exploring my first point, form, structure and language and how that proves I'm correct, including context and alternative viewpoints. Then I need to start to think about my second text and repeat the same kind of style for that. But this time what I'm doing this is to make sure I'm writing why or how it is similar. When I've finished my conclusion is to reaffirm my argument once more, making it clear why I feel this way and why the writers would have written the text in the way that they have. So again, here are two examples of questions but we're not going to be using those. Have a look at this. This is an example of two texts from based on World War One literature, but again the method is exactly the same. The character Osborne in Sheriff's Journey's End and Whelan's Arthur Boggis in Atkins and Powers are both central for revering, revering faith. Faith is predominantly seen in three main ways, through faith in God, faith in war and humanity, and the contrasting lack of faith which appears later on. Arthur's faith is primarily seen through his trust in God. He is prepared to put his life in God's hands in the confidence that God will protect him. This commendable, though possibly credulous, faith disappears through the play as a reality of warfare presents itself. Osborne, however, appears to remain far more faithful during the play. He shows great faith in mankind, particularly in Stanhope. Throughout the play, it is Osborne's faith which provides hope and optimism to the characters, allowing them to continue fighting. It is therefore worth questioning whether the fragile Stanhope we see at the beginning of the play would have been able to continue commanding his company if Osborne did not show such great faith in him. So there you go. If you're thinking about the text that you wish to use in your argument, immediately answer the question in that first sentence. Look at the first text, then look at the second text. So you're essentially looking at three main parts of your introduction. At the beginning of the play, Arthur is presented as a devout Christian. The first line we hear from Arthur, Rise and Shine, holds various religious connotations. The idea of being risen can be seen as a parallel for Christ's resurrection, bringing the restoration of faith in mankind. Although Shine highlights the idea of brightness and goodness, there is an element of blind faith in Arthur. His faith is so concrete he does not see the incongruity between Christ saving humanity and the death of humanity in war. Despite Osborne being overlooked as a religious character, he too can be seen to use light as a symbol of faith. In Act 2, Scene 1, Osborne says, I never knew the sun could rise in so many ways until I came out here. 
The quote could be seen as a numinous experience, with God revealing himself as the Son. Oswald may be a character salvaged from the horrors of war by his new faith. War provides a realisation of faith for Osborne, contrasting Arthur's fervent faith in God's protection, which allows him to enter the war. The structure of William's quote directly links to warfare, as the word rise can be seen as men rising to the challenge of being soldiers. Drumming the word shine, a relationship develops between the two. By signing up for war, you are illuminating a path of justice and becoming good. Arthur can be portrayed as a disciple of Christ, almost like a pastor, urging the people of Accrington one by one to rise and see the optimism of the war supported by God. He's appealing to people to join him and become people of Christ and consequently warfare. Similar to Arthur, Osborne can be seen to initiate faith, although the faith he generates is far less Christocentric. Instead, Osborne may be seen as an object of faith, which allows people to remain faithful to the war. As Stanhope suffers due to his strong alcohol addiction and unrelenting stress, his plea to Osborne and looks up at Osborne's face, Stanhope shows admiration for him, almost as an infant gazes up at a father. Alternatively, Osborne merely displays an optimistic personality whilst fulfilling a duty. So you can see it's interlaced with comparison all the way through, but just listen to the level of analysis that's being made and how sophisticated that argument is throughout. That method is exactly the method that you need to be employing in your own answers. And then our conclusion. On balance, the defeat we see in Osborne at the end of the play does not represent a loss of faith. Although he has little faith in God, the faith in humanity becomes even clearer as the play progresses. After Osborne's death, faith remains through Raleigh and Stanhope. As Raleigh dies, he is sitting on Osborne's bed. This shows how faith remains in Osborne and it is Osborne's positive mentality and faithfulness which allows the rest of the battalion to continue in war. It is this faithful continuation which causes Osborne to be far more faithful at the end of the play than Arthur. Arthur's faith diminishes completely as he questions the motives of the gods he has never doubted before. The symbolism of England's glory flying away, I believe, represents Arthur's abandonment of faith and defeat. So thank you. There we go. That's exactly how you answer a question to get perfect marks. You've now finished your AS exam. Congratulations to you. And obviously you look forward to achieving full marks when you open those envelopes. Well done and keep revising.